All right, welcome everyone. So we have seen what Kramer's rule is and we've applied it to an explicit example to show how we can use Kramer's rule to solve the system of linear equations. In the case that we looked at, we had a system of two linear equations with two variables. Um, right now in this video, I wanna take a look at the proof of why Kramer's rule holds. So I've paraphrased Kramer's rule up top, which is um, namely if I have the matrix equation AX equals B, um, where A, we're assuming again, is an invertible N by N matrix, then we know that this system has a unique solution and Kramer's rule says that that solution um, is given by the ith entry in the solution can be written as the determinant of A sub I B, we've discussed with this matrix is divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix A. So let's take a look at this proof in general. So we're gonna begin by taking a matrix A um, we're going to assume matrix A is invertible and that it's n times n. So each of the columns in matrix A, we're going to denote with a bold A sub 1 for column vector 1, A sub 2 is column vector 2, and so on. Um, so now this vector x, um, this is denoting the unique solution to this matrix equation Ax is equal to B for some fixed um, vector B in Rn. So now let's denote the following matrix. We have a capital I with a subscript of a lowercase i being evaluated at, matri at vector x. So remember, using this notation, which is similar to the A sub I B notation, this means take the ith column of the n by n identity matrix and replace it with vector x. So my first column of the identity matrix is the standard vector E1, and then E2, and so on. And the only change I'm going to apply to this matrix is I'm gonna replace the ith column, which should be the standard column vector with whatever this vector x is. Okay, and now we're gonna take this matrix that we just defined by removing the ith column and replacing it with x. We're gonna multiply this matrix on the left by our matrix of coefficients A. So I've got A times this matrix, which has had one column of the identity matrix replaced. And so when we compute this product, we can first multiply a by each of the column vectors in this matrix. So the first, so in the product, the first column is gonna be A times E1, the second column is gonna be A times E2, and so on. And then we can simplify each of these products. So when I take matrix A and multiply by the first um, standard column vector, it's just gonna equal, pull off the first column of matrix A and then taking A times E2 is gonna give me the second column vector of A, would give me A2, and so on. And um, so each of these column vectors in the product is just gonna give me the corresponding column of matrix A with one exception. We replaced the ith column of the identity matrix with X. So when I take this product, the ith column vector, or excuse me, the ith column is now gonna be A times X. And our assumption was that X was the vector that solves this equation. So when I take A times X, that means I get B. So when I take the product of A times the identity matrix whose ith column is replaced with X, I get matrix A back except its ith column is replaced with column vector B. So this is exactly what we called A sub I B. So just to rehash this, right, taking matrix A times the identity matrix whose ith column has been replaced by X, where X happens to be the solution to this equation, that is equivalent to just replacing matrix, the ith column of matrix A with B. And so now let's use what we know about uh, the multiplicative property of determinants to finish up this proof. 
So what I can see is that, okay, the determinant of AIB, well, since A sub IB is equal to A times I sub IX, since these two are equal, then their determinants should be equal. And now I have a product on the right side, and I know that this breaks up into the product of the determinants, where uh, the first um, matrix in this product, A, its determinant will just denote determinant of A. And the second matrix in this product is AIX. And so now let's consider what would the determinant of this matrix um, that we get when we replace the ith column of the identity matrix with this vector x. What would that determinant look like? Well, let's do some scratch work up top. So let's first consider we had a four by four matrix where the first column is standard column one, the second column is standard column two, the third column we have x1 in the first position. And otherwise, we have zeros with a one in the third position and then a zero in the fourth position for column three. And column four is the standard column vector. If I were to take the determinant of this matrix, right, we would get one. And the reason why is this matrix is just the identity matrix with a row replacement operation applied. So that would not change the determinant of the identity matrix. We would still get one. And similarly, we could introduce coefficients um, in the, in this case, third column of this matrix um, at every position except for the third position, and we would still get a determinant of one. Since this is equivalent to doing, say, like three row replacements, and row replacement has no effect on the determinant, so since we are applying row replacements to the identity matrix, which has determinant one, the determinant of the resulting matrix is the same. It is also one. The matrix we are considering, however, replaces the entirety of one of the columns with X. So that means we actually have one more operation that we would need to do, which is namely multiply by, in this case, X3. So when I scale, one row by x3. This does change the determinant, and we actually would get a determinant value of x3. So in general, if I'm taking the determinant of this matrix i, um, the identity matrix, when we replace column i with vector x, that, is, that determinant is just going to give me x sub i. So let's re- um, hash what we've got. We've got the that A sub I B, this matrix that we replace the ith column of A with B, that we could write as the product of matrix A times this identity matrix that has had one uh, column replaced. Um, so that means the determinant of this matrix A I B it is going to equal the determinant of the product of A times this identity matrix that has had one column replacement. And now we know that the determinant of a product, again, is equal to the product of their determinants. And we just found that the determinant of this identity matrix, which we've replaced one of the columns with X, um, that determinant would be XI. So in other words, the determinant of A sub I B is equal to the determinant of A times X I. And so finally, we can solve for X I by dividing both sides of this equation by the determinant of A. And since A is an invertible matrix, we know that its determinant is non-zero, so that operation division by determinant of A makes sense. So now we've solved for X I, the um, ith entry in the solution is therefore going to be the determinant of A sub IB divided by the determinant of A. And this is exactly what Kramer's rule states. Okay, so that wraps up the material for Kramer's rule. Um, there are lots of applications of this rule. Um, we've just looked at applications to solving um, systems of linear equations. Um, the textbook also goes through how you can apply Kramer's rule to find the inverse of a matrix. Um, 
uh, as well as compute areas and volumes of um, parallelograms and parallel pipettes in, in R3 and some other branches of mathematics um, like differential geometry and differential equations. So I'm just pointing this out in case you happen to see Kramer's rule in the future, you'll be familiar with it. Okay, so this wraps up our treatment of Kramer's rule. Hope everybody is doing great. And let me know if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or come by my office hours.